this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop with another Kickstarter preview for you. This time it is the solo mode in Distilled, which is a Euro game of distilling spirits and drinks and trying to sell them and gaining as much prestige as you can. And like always with our Kickstarter coverage, we received no compensation for this. We just want to help you make an informed choice about the game. I'm going to quickly teach you the rules of the game, then do a full solo playthrough. And at the end, I'll have my thoughts on the game, my impressions of how it's playing. Feel free to use the timestamps, the chapters to skip to any part of that. And if you like the One Stop Co-op Shop, lots of ways to get involved. We have our Patreon, our Discord, our streaming channel, our weekly podcast. Uh, check them all out. We'd love to see you there. So before we get into the phases of Distilled, let me break down some of the major parts of the game board. So first, you've got your player board. You have your unique personality you've selected. And I have people from all over the world. But in this case, I'm playing Angus Douglas, the Scotsman. And you have your pantry where you keep your ingredients. Right now, I just have yeast and water. You've got your storeroom where you have items, bottles, and barrels. You can get to distillery upgrades that are kind of permanent, helpful things. And eventually when you have some spirits aging, you can put them in your warehouse. And you also have this list of recipes. Everyone starts out being able to make moonshine and vodka, but you'll have to unlock the other ones by paying for them. Additionally, you've got the market, both the basic and advanced one. You're only seeing the bottom of the advanced. They've got three types of cards, each with four in the offer. And these are the things you will buy to make your spirits and also to make them more valuable uh, with bottles and things. And I mentioned the recipes previously. This is where you deal with those. You can buy them from these little areas. These are the labels for the different spirits you can make. And that's all in the attempt to earn as many spirit points, this game's victory points, as possible over the course of seven rounds. And I mentioned I'm playing solo. In solo, besides just scoring as many points as you can, you have to progress up this little track of goals. And basically, once you complete one goal, you can progress up to the next row. And to win the game, you have to have made your way all the way up to one of the A goals and completed it. And there are a bunch of these that are randomized. And additionally, you'll see both the A and the B goals have red numbers. The sum of the A and B goals you completed is the amount of spirit points you need to win, the minimum. And now to quickly go over the actual phases, you start each round with a market phase. You can buy up to two items from the basic market. And the price of everything is at the bottom right here. You'll see many of the basic market items are free. And you can also buy as many cards as you can afford from the advanced markets. You have the permanent distillery upgrades, which will often give you spirit points at the end of the game and give you really nice ongoing bonuses. You have better ingredients than the basic ones, which will kick your spirits up a notch in terms of value and spirit points. And you have bottles and barrels that will also improve your mixes. Now, in both solo and competitive play, at the end of the market phase, the rightmost card of each row is discarded onto this truck. But in solo play, you additionally discard the top B card and see what's on the next one. And it'll tell you more cards to get rid of. And whenever any card is taken from one of these rows by you or by one of those effects, you fill in. So you'll always have four cards available. After the market phase, you go into the distilling phase where you try to make your spirits and you can only distill one spirit per round. So with seven rounds in the game, that means no more than seven spirits distilled overall. And you do this by putting cards in your washback. You have to have at least one water, at least one yeast, and then at least one sugar ingredient, which comes in three types. You've got grain, fruit, and plant-based. For example, let's say that I've got two mixed grains from the basic market in there. And once you're done adding cards, and again, you need at least one in each place, you then take a number of generic alcohol cards equal to the number of sugars added, and you shuffle these all together. And then you remove the topmost card and the bottommost card, <laughs> both alcohols, and they go back into your pantry. So you'll be able to use them for a later distilling. And whatever's left is going to determine what type of spirit you distilled. And the recipe card gives you the basics here. Moonshine cannot have any sugars. They have to have all come out when you uh, took the top and bottom card. Whereas vodka can have any sugars you like. Kachaka needs to have one or more plant sugars, but no grain, no fruit. And they each also have a specific barrel they need. Now you always have a steel barrel available, but to do the aged spirits, you'll need clay or wood. Some spirits are also worth more money, and all of them have a base spirit point value that's going to help your final score. So in this case, with two grains, since I only have moonshine and vodka unlocked, I could distill vodka. But if I had gotten the recipe, for example, for soju, which needs two or more grains, I could distill that instead to get uh, way more victory points. Now, to finish your distill, you have to put it in a barrel. Again, you always have this metal barrel available, but you can buy other ones. 
And then if it's an aging spirit with this hourglass, you have to keep it for at least one round and age it at the end of the round. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, many of them do not have an aging symbol. It's crossed out, which means you have to sell it immediately. And all that means is that on top of the barrel, you give it a bottle. Again, you always have a basic glass bottle and you gain the silver value. You'll see three here plus any bonus if it was vodka or moonshine. And you'll also gain the spirit points, which I have none of, but they would be down here in addition to the basic value, like I already said. Now, if it is a spirit that needs to age, you won't bottle it yet. You put it here in your warehouse. And at the end of each round, it'll age, which gives you a free card from the flavors. So here, my whiskey has an herbal feel to it or whatever. Now, additionally, whenever you sell a spirit, you get a label matching it. And you've got these seven label spaces at the top of your player board. And you can pick one to cover. You don't have to go in any order. And you immediately get a bonus, like you get a free item from the offer or a free upgrade or a free ingredient or extra victory points, those kind of things. Now, before we get to the solo specific goals, each of the identities has a unique ingredient and a unique recipe all their own. The ingredient is super powerful, but can only be gained by a specific one of those little label bonus points. And the recipe is worth a ridiculous amount of victory points, generally speaking, but can be pretty tough to do. Like, look, this single malt scotch, I need to have uh, at least two grain in it. One of them needs to be barley, which uh, my beer or bear barley could certainly satisfy, but there's other ones in the deck. But then I have to let it age at least three rounds. Good lord, that's uh, some nice endgame scoring if I can make it happen. Now, getting back to winning in solo, you can complete goals from the bottom up. And whenever you complete a goal, you mark it with a coin and you get to flip the goals above it. And when you complete a goal in a higher row, this little barrel marker moves up and now you are locked out of completing any lower goals because you can only complete goals that are beside or above goals you've completed, uh, not goals that are below. And just to reiterate what I said earlier, to win, you have to have spirit points equal to or greater than the sum of the B and the A goal you complete. If you don't get to the A goal, you're already done. You don't win. So that's basically it. Let's jump into the play and see how we do at distilling. So before I start the first round, it's definitely important to see what my kind of overall plan is. So my first two options are to distill an aged spirit, which is pretty much impossible the first round because you just don't have enough money to set yourself up for it, or to sell a spirit worth at least eight spirit points. So I don't think I'll get a goal the first round. I'll just try to set myself up financially. Looking at the bees, I've got sell a whiskey worth at least 18 spirit points. Collect at least six different bottles, sell a spirit worth at least $15, or collect three labels of the same spirit type, which would be easiest with like moonshine or vodka. And then you definitely have to have your eye on the prize for the A's. I can either get five labels from my region or two labels each from three different regions. That one sounds almost impossible. So what's this about regions? There are three of them. You've got the Americas, Asia, and Europe. But many spirits, moonshine, vodka, and whiskey, have this little silhouette. And that means they automatically match your identity's region, which for my guy is Europe. So to do this A, five labels from my region, I'd have to do a lot of moonshine, vodka, gin, whiskey, and brandy. Whereas for this, I think much tougher one, I'd have to branch out quite a lot by a lot, lot of recipes. So I think I'm going to aim for the easier one. Although, look, I do need to have 10 more spirit points to be able to do it. And with that being the case, selling a whiskey worth at least 18 spirit points, that seems to make sense, which clearly makes me think I should be distilling an aged spirit. So the cheapest aged spirits to buy are whiskey and rum. They're both in the silver category, which costs four money, but whiskey will match my region. So I'm going to probably just do like some vodka or moonshine shine. That won't hurt me for the A goal this round. Try to get as much money as possible. And then I can aim for some whiskey to start uh, aging round two. And by the way, this aging idea kind of plays into Angus's specialty. Everyone has a minor bonus power. It says during the age step, draw two flavor cards instead of one and pick one to add. So I'll get more value on average out of the flavors I get from aging my stuff. All right, so we're going into the market phase. I have water and yeast, the bare minimum I need, except for some sugars. And of course, I've got my barrel and my bottle. And remember, the basic market is very cheap, but they don't give you much extra. And you can only buy two things from it around. So let's first look up here to the advanced market. We've got a whole bunch of bottles. And this one is excellent to set me up for a start. It only costs me one, but it says when selling, gain two money. And if it's a non-age spirit, which this first one will be, gain four money instead. I'm going to be all fancy and put my vodka in a plastic liter bottle for a ton of money. 
but I don't even have nearly enough money for any of the ingredients. They are very expensive ones. Uh, fruits and plants tend to be more expensive than grains. And let's see if any of these distillery upgrades look good. I mean, they're always good. Biochemist at the start of each round, add a basic yeast to your pantry for free. And he gives you a victory point for every specialist you get, including himself. That's awesome. The architect, during the market phase, you may discount one distillery upgrade by two. So she would make it easier for me to buy more of these. And then she gives me victory points for every distillery upgrade. That would be an awesome one-two punch if I had more money. Spirit Safe is stupid expensive. No way I'll get it. But it says during the distill phase, you may choose to return one of the removed cards back to the spirit. So if I have bad luck, when I draw off that top and bottom card, I can get them back. And then the Cooper for five during the market phase, discount one barrel by two, which would actually be pretty good for me aging stuff. But clearly not going to have time before he goes away since the rightmost cards get discarded. So yeah, I only have two money to start and definitely going to get the plastic leader bottle for one of them. And everything slides down, immediately fills in. Got still more bottles. A skull bottle. That's very nice but super expensive. So I've only got one money left and I can't afford anything, but I can buy two from the basic market. And if I'm about to do whiskey, I'll need some grains. So let me go ahead and get two grains. Those are both free and add them to my pantry. And at the end of the market phase, we're going to clear stuff before we start distilling. We lose the rightmost card from each. And we get rid of the topmost B card and see, ooh, that is a bunch. All of these and this bottle go away and everything fills in. That might actually not be too terrible for me because I certainly couldn't afford all that fruit. We're going into distilling and I'm just going to use everything because uh, the more you put in there, the more alcohol you get, it's usually worth more money. So that's all helpful. So because I use two sugars, I get two alcohols. And here we go, moment of truth. The top card is one of the alcohols. No, that's money for me. No, whoa. Now uh, it does still have trace amounts of alcohol, so it still counts as vodka, but clearly a very uh, low alcohol content vodka. So yeah, all I've got is yeast, water, and two mixed grains, which is kind of the worst it could have been because I would have uh, liked to keep some of those. And all I have is moonshine and vodka. Remember, moonshine can't have any sugar and vodka can have any sugars. And we've got two grain sugars. Has to be in a metal barrel. We go right to the selling phase, and this is a non-aged spirit, so I'm going to use my plastic liter bottle. And since it's not aged, I'm getting four money, five from a metal barrel, six from the water, and vodka itself gives me another one, so seven money overall. In terms of spirit points, I have zero bonus whatsoever. Awesome. So I'm just getting vodka's base value of two. Yay, I accomplished something. And all the stuff that was used goes away. My metal barrel I always keep along with my basic glass bottle. My plastic leader bottle I keep nearby because I can get bonus victory points at the end of the game for having a lot of bottles from different regions. Although this one is not from any region, so it won't help with that. But there are also solo goals that need bottles. And then all of these go back to their basic market spots. And let's not forget, because I sold my vodka, I get to get one of these bonuses. And I usually like to start with one of the free ones. Free ingredient, free recipe, free item, or free upgrade. And I think I'm going to go for the item because I still want to try to make whiskey next turn, which means getting this awesome seven cost barrel for free, which gives me an extra flavor card the first time I age my whiskey. Sounds pretty good to me. So that was a free item that's covered up. That's it. Things run pretty quick. We go to round two. And I really, really want to distill an age spirit this round, hoping for whiskey. And I've got eight money to make that happen. Now, remember that I have the two alcohol from my last distill. Note that alcohol says can be used as either a water or a yeast in your washback. So I'm already actually good to go for the whiskey, except that I need some sugars for my pantry and I need to buy the actual recipe. So let's start with the recipe. Whiskey is in the silver category. So I pay four to grab one of these silver cubes. And I plop it down right there. So it leaves me with four money. And I already have the barrel. So all I really need right now is at least two grains. Although I'd like to get a third just to be safe. Because remember, after I take out the top and bottom card, I still need to have those two sugars to make it work. So I've got wheat and rye both hanging out up here for three. So it doesn't matter too much. I guess I'll buy the wheat. And there's some sorghum. Oh, I can almost afford that too. And then I'm going to get two free mixed grains for my two basic market buys. And I'm once again down to one money, so let's see if we can make this work. But first, cleaning out the market, my frosted glass bottle, the apples, the architect. Oh, by the way, I didn't show you one of the new cards that came out. Natural Spring, you get a free basic water every round. And then you get one SP for each of your equipment upgrades. The equipment part is not the best, although I guess it's the equipment itself. But I like the free water. If I ever have enough money, we'll see. Oop, or it's going away. So that one, that one, that one. Natural Spring, Rye, Wax Sealed Bottle. All right, and that's all filled. Let's go to still. All right, so we're going to do our two basic grains and our wheat, give ourselves a little bit of breathing room, an alcohol for the yeast and alcohol for the water. And since we have three sugars, we get three more alcohols. So a lot of alcohol in the mix this time. All right, here we go. Come on. Yes, we are safe because we can afford to lose one grain. 
And we did. Oh, and it was our good one, the wheat. We'll have to use that again. So that goes back to our pantry, leaving us with one, two, three, four alcohol and two basic grains. And whiskey needs at least two grains and it needs a wooden barrel. So we're going to take all of these. We're going to put them underneath our ex bourbon hog's head. And it takes one of the two spots in our warehouse. We can only have two at a time. And we mark it with a whiskey label to remind ourselves what it is. And before we do anything else, let's pause for a second. We distilled an aged spirit, which gives us plus three money. You get the bonus immediately, which is going to help us because we're not selling anything this round. And ooh, we've got a good C we can already go to on the way to that whiskey one. Sell a spirit with at least three alcohol, which we uh, already have set up. Now, like I said, you can do goals to the side or above. But once I do one of these second row goals, this barrel moves up and I'm locked out of this one forever. And additionally, you can't use the same spirit in the same round for multiple goals. So I couldn't sell like my whiskey with three alcohol for at least eight spirit points and get both of these. I'd have to pick one or the other. Now we're in the sell phase, but I don't have anything to sell. I have to age this at least one round. So when you don't sell, you can hold a tasting. And how it works is you can give up up to four of your spirit points that you've earned to get an equivalent amount of money. And I really think I'll need more spirit points to do something useful next round. So let's go ahead and spend two to get two more dollars. All right, now we're in the aging phase where Angus's power comes in. I get to look at two cards and add one. And all you really care about is the value up here. Otherwise, they're identical except for theme. So do I want a weedy whiskey or a coriander whiskey? I love coriander, but that sounds a little weird. So let's make it weedy. And then remember, because of my barrels power, I get another free flavor. But I don't think I get to see that one or do the two for one thing. I think I just add it. And next round, I can continue to let that age or sell it. I think I'm probably going to need to sell it. All right, into round three with zero spirit points. Yay, Mike. But I do have six money for the market. And I've got the wheat that I had left over and an alcohol. I could try to go for whiskey again. The alcohol will do for yeast or water. So I'd need to get one more of those and then clearly some more grain. Then I also would need another wood barrel, which could be this basic one for four, or I could upgrade to an American standard barrel for five. That would give me an extra spirit point. And during the age phase, I may spend one money to gain the spirit point. That's kind of cool. All right, I'm a little too low on money to consider any of the really cool things. I think I'll get this sorghum for two. That's a cheap grain. And some rice came out, also a fairly cheap grain sugar, but not cheap enough for me because I only have $4 left and I do need to get a barrel. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Remember, I need yeast or water because I only have the one alcohol. Yeast says when purchased, gain one money. So for my first basic purchase, I'm going to get a yeast. That gives me five money. For my second purchase, I'm going to get a whole grain for free. And that leaves me with the five I need to get the wood barrel instead of using the basic one, which is just one less. So I'm out of money. Let's clear things out. Oh, the solo card is just messing up the entire left column. And we got a bunch of new stuff. Ooh, this is a nice one. Like my basic metal barrel, it's reusable, but it adds more value to the spirit and some spirit points. That's neat. But enough of that. We are here to distill. We're going to try to make whiskey again. So I've got three grains again, sorghum, wheat, and basic. Got a yeast and an alcohol standing in for water. I'm adding three more alcohols for the sugars again. Okay, and our top one is, uh-oh, a wheat. So if we get another one, we are not making whiskey anymore. Oh, and we did. Instead, we've got a ton of alcohol, um, a yeast, and one wheat, one grain sugar. So that's actually okay. That's okay. We can adapt. So I'm going to sell it as another vodka, make a nice amount of money for next turn. And that still counts as part of my region, just like the whiskey. So I'm still working towards that A goal. And in fact, ooh, this is interesting. I was thinking that I would use the whiskey to be my sell a spirit with at least three alcohol, but this vodka is going to have three alcohol. So I could use that and then I could build up the whiskey agent long enough to make it have at least 18 spirit points and get my B taken care of too. That seems too good not to do. So we'll save my wooden barrel. Clearly it's not needed anymore. And we'll do our metal barrel and glass bottle and go ahead and sell this vodka. Money wise, I'm very happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus one from the basic vodka value. But spirit points, not nearly as good. We get just one from the wheat plus uh, vodka's basic two, so that's just three. Remember, I keep my glass bottle and my metal barrel. Everything else goes away. And let's stick to the plan. Go here and get two more spirit points from that. And now we have access to the B I want to do. And like I said, I'm not going to sell that whiskey yet. I'm going to let it age again. So Angus is going to let me draw two, keep one flavor. Nutty or sweet? Ooh, sweet's worth three money. It's going to be sweet and weedy. Okay. And by the way, I know this needs to be worth 18 spirit points. It's a bit hard to see, but you get a bonus based on how many flavors are in. So three flavors gives me six bonus and whiskey's worth 10 all by itself. And the barrel's worth one. I don't remember what else is in here, but I'm basically 100% sure that I will be okay. And if I'm worried, I can buy a bottle for it this coming market phase to make sure that it sells well. Oh, and yeah, I almost forgot my bonus. Should I get my barley? 
since I already have a bunch of grain and try to make my single malt scotch? I mean, yeah, I've got the wooden barrel too. Let's do that. So where is it here? Move signature ingredient to pantry. There we go. Although actually maybe I should get an upgrade because that'll help me for several turns to come. Yeah, that seems like the smarter move. Let's see, Master Blender. During the cell phase, gain one additional spirit point when selling a spirit if you already have a spirit label from the same region. I'm gonna do all the same regions, so that would be a bunch of extra bonuses. And then, ooh, two spirit points for every two identical spirit labels. I'm planning to do some like extra whiskeys and some extra vodkas, so that might be good. Although Glassworks is nice, during the market phase, you may discount one bottle by two, so I could get a bunch of bottles, save myself some money. Ooh, the farmer gives me a basic mixed grain every turn, and with me doing whiskey, that's basically all I'm making. Or the coppersmith, during the distill phase, add one additional alcohol. Oh, man. And I get victory points for every two Europe labels. Gosh, all those are good, but I gotta go for the master blender, I think. And that goes on one of your distillery upgrade spots. You can only have three. If you get another one, you have to discard it. All right, into round four, already halfway, and that's not looking great, although we should make a bunch this round. Let's see, I've got eight money. I've got just wheat, no water, no yeast, no nothing. And there's no special yeast and water options in the ingredients. I'll get water first. It says, when purchased, you may draw the top card of any market deck and either purchase it or put it on the bottom of the deck. I'm going to go to the ingredients, see if I get another grain, see if I get a yeast or a plant sugar. No, I'm not going for that at all. All right, not much choice now. I have to get a yeast, which remember gets me one money. You know what? Maybe it's a bad idea, but I think I will buy the glassworks because I'm going to get a bottle this turn. And if I get a bottle a couple more turns, it'll pay for itself and be worth a victory points. So I'll spend five of my eight. That brings out a malting floor. At the end of the distill phase, add one flavor card to the spirit you just distilled. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Even an unaged thing gets an aging card. And unfortunately, both of these bottles are specifically good for Asian spirits, which I'm not doing. But I'll still get the carton bottle. It costs two, so it'll be free with my power. And that gets me another clay barrel. None of these are working for what I'm going for at all. There is no grain up here. This is bad. So I think I'm just going to stop and hope for the best with the four money I have left. All right, get out of here. Stuff I do not need. Give me some grains. And yeah, I hope the AI clears out a bunch. And uh, didn't clear out as much as I would have hoped. A nice malting floor is gone. Okay, two wood barrels, some mountain spring water, but still no grains. And some more upgrades. Ooh, the metal rickhouse would help me age better. I'm definitely going to sell my whiskey this turn. Besides that, let's just try to make what we can. So I've got a yeast. I've got a water. I've got two grains. It'll have to do. So only two alcohol being added. And I lost the grain, so it's definitely not going to be whiskey. And one of the alcohols. So it's just a mixed bag, if not much. I guess it's going to be vodka again, worth one, two, plus the bonus, three money. And just the basic two spirit points. Oh, wait, but I don't want to forget. I gained one additional spirit point when selling a spirit if I already have a label from that region. So nice. And where am I going to put my third vodka? Well, I'm pretty sure if I'm figuring correctly, my only possible chance to do my single malt scotch is to get that thing now. So let's get my signature ingredient. All right, now for the whiskey. Come on. So we got to get to at least 18 spirit points or we are done. So new bet's sweet. Plastic was the extra flavor my expensive barrel added. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and the weedy. And I forgot the tons of alcohol, so that is nine money coming from that, which is definitely good. Well, let's see, how about spirit points? Oh, we have no bonuses except for the barrel. So that's one, three flavor. That's worth plus six. So that's seven plus the base of 10 from whiskey. That's 17. I mean, I'm glad we got this master blender. That'll make it 18. Well, what the hey, we'll go and use our carton bottle to make it 19. So that locks in my B. I only got one C option. Earn eight or more in a round. I think I can do that, eight or more money. And I already have four out of five labels from one region, so that'll be easy. Here's the most important thing, 19. So let's see, if I'm on eight, that would be 27. Boom. Oh, and I get this, huh? Well, let's see, I think I'm gonna do trade one card from your pantry for one card from the truck because that'll let me grab the barrel I use without spending seven. And that bonus flavor card is super important because my single malt scotch has to have at least three flavor cards. And with the number of rounds left, I would only be able to get two on it myself. So yes, I need to ditch something from here. Oh crud, I guess it's gotta be the alcohol. All right, that's okay, we'll survive, we'll survive. So going into the round, I've got 16 money. That seems pretty good. Not sure it'll be good enough. All right, so I need, need, need to set up my single malt scotch. Um, I don't think I can afford to buy water from the basic market, so I'm going to get the mountain spring water. It basically pays for itself, and if it gets removed during the distill phase, you get a free basic water, which is pretty awesome. And let's see what fills in. Ooh, great, a barley. I'll definitely get that to make the grain work out better. Oh, and that's fine. I guess I didn't need my special ingredient because barley was there anyway. So that gives me three grains, and I need two minimum, so I think I'm pretty safe. Now, I do still need a yeast, which gives me plus one money. I've got one more basic buy. I guess I'll just get another grain, right? Why not? All right, I still got 10 money. I think I'm going to get the metal rickhouse. That gives me an extra flavor card as well. Should really hopefully help me boost up the points at the end of the game. 
And that's the last upgrade I can fit. Oh, and speaking of, even though this is specifically for Asian spirits, I'll buy it for two with my discount. Uh, nothing much interesting there. So I'll keep my last three money and feel I'm pretty good about making the single malt scotch. All right, that nice steel barrel is gone. The figs of that coppersmith. Plus, they're still hitting that left column. Barrel and berries, I don't mind that. And these I can't even fit anymore, so no worries. All right, give me grain. There we go, two grains, corn and millet. I'm happy about that. And I've got some wooden barrels to buy. I think I've got an extra one as well. And some nice bottles. All right. Oh, and this one even gains a bonus for European spirits. I think I'm going to try to do another whiskey. But first things first, let's go for that scotch. So we have uh, four grains. Geez, should I like save one of them? Nah. And then a yeast and a mountain spring water. That means four alcohols are getting added to the mix. Right, come on, come on. Here we go. An alcohol. That's fine. And a barley. You know, that's actually okay because that'll make it easier for me to get another whiskey hopefully next turn. So all the rest of this is getting aged. Oh, it's lucky I had that extra barley because now my signature barley is still in there. So I do have two grain. I do have one barley. I don't have any other type of stuff. And it's got to age until it gets at least three flavor cards. But that's going to be pretty easy because I'm putting it under this X bourbon hogshead. That means it's going to get an extra aging card from the Rick House, an extra aging card from that, and then my regular one. So it'll already have three agings at the end of this round. Awesome. And I put my little signature token here to show that it is my special recipe. All right, let's go into aging. Two free flavors and Angus's ability. Woody, I'm okay with that for scotch or rubber tires. I guess we'll go for Woody. All right, only two rounds left. And man, I'm far away, although my signature one should just boost me a ton. And if I make another vodka or another whiskey, either way, I'm going to get bonus victory points from the master blender. So my three money is not the worst thing in the world. I've got a barley. I've got an alcohol. I've got a bottle. I've got one wooden barrel. So I really need water or yeast and some more grain. Oh, wait, I forgot last turn I distilled the mountain spring water in my special blend which means I have a free water. So that's great. I can just use my two basic buys to get mixed grains and be good to go. So with that, instead of buying the more expensive grains, I think I'm going to get this etched crystal decanter since it's good for Europe and I get a discount on it. I'll buy it for two. And I got one money left. Nothing to do with it. You know, I just got excited because look, this bee says collected at least six different bottles. If I bought one more, I would have that. But remember, bees don't boost you at all. They just give you more spirit points you have to earn. So no, not going to make my life harder. I do need to get eight or more money either this round or next round because then I can immediately gain this A when I'm easily going to have that many labels. But anyway, yeah, stopping for now. And there goes some more stuff. And ooh, for next turn, I don't think I need any more bottles, but sorghum, turbo yeast, corn, millet. I mean, basically everything here is potentially good for me. Well, let's get to distilling. It's pretty basic this time. Just uh, three grains, some water and alcohol for the yeast. It gives me three more alcohols. And I'm just hoping I keep two of the grains so I can make one more whiskey. Alcohol, looks like we're good. Oh, and two alcohols. All right. Kind of would have liked to keep one of those, but now I guess it'll be good for my next round. I, mean, I do have two grain, which will let me make whiskey. Oh, I actually have three grain and some alcohol and water. So we can start aging that in that American Standard barrel I bought a while back. Boom, there we go. Now we have the key question. Do I sell something or do I let them both age and then just like plan on making vodka my last turn? And I think aging is probably the answer. So the whiskey is getting a free flavor from my metal rickhouse since it's the first time it's aged. Then I get to draw two, pick one for each of these, I believe. Okay, for my signature, skunky or honey. I'm glad I had a choice there. For my whiskey, sweaty or hay. These are not the best options. And yeah, my plan now is to make vodka the final turn, sell all three of them with all three of my bottles, and hopefully live like a king. You know what? I've got one money, and I'm going to go ahead and use the American Standard Barrels power. I can spend one money to gain one spirit point. So I'm only at 28, but we're hoping I'll explode here at the end. Okay, so final market phase, clearly I can't afford anything. <laughs> and I've got the alcohol for the yeast and the water, so let's just get two mixed grains for free and we'll make them into vodka in a second. And no need to get rid of all that stuff because we're going to be done anyway. So let's distill one more time. Alcohol, alcohol, two mixed grains, which means you guessed it, more alcohol. And let's see, lose an alcohol, no, and a mixed grain, I'm fine with that. So my vodka is going to get me one, two, three, plus one, four money. And just two spirit points. Oh, no, actually three from my master blender. Nice. Oh, wait, I forgot my metal barrel. So that's one more money. And let's bottle this thing. We'll use the glass bottle. Then we're going to sell the other things with the nicer bottles. So that's one more. And I get to place my vodka. I'm going to go for one victory point here. And this left one is special in that it lets you swap one of the cards in your solo row. So it might not matter. But I'm going to swap this one. That way I have an extra card I could potentially fulfill. Sell a spirit worth at least eight. I'm sure I'll do that. Earn eight or more in a round. Those would go well together. And then I'll still be able to get that. So awesome. I just gave myself basically two extra SP. All right, and let's get to it in ascending orders of awesomeness. So my whiskey. Ooh, got fruity as my free one. Awesome. 
So it should be worth a lot. And every five money is worth one spirit point at the end. So it's not worthless. So three, five, eight, nine. And then spirit points, one from the wood barrel, two from the barley. Whiskey itself gives 10. That's 13. And then two flavor cards gives me 16. Master Blender, since this is all from the same region, gives me 17. So that sends me up to 49. And oh wait, let's not forget, I need a bottle. So I'll use my Asian ceramic bottle. It's not an Asian spirit, so I only get two bonus SP and two more money, but I'll take it. And let's see, I'm just going to get three spirit points. So I'll go ahead and get two here. And here we go with all my hopes are riding on. So a taste of honey and wood and melon and grass. I mean, okay. I think a woody, grassy scotch makes sense. Oh, and this, of course, has to go in my European etched crystal decanter. Plus two money, plus four spirit points. Yes. So let's see, how much money is this worth? Yikes. Two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. That's three spirit points all by itself. Speaking of spirit points, one, five for my special one, six from the spring water, uh, seven, eleven from that, and then four flavors, which is plus ten more, twenty-one. And plus 19 more, 40. Oh my gosh. And plus one from her, 41. And that gets me to 42. Amazing. That's got to be a win, right? That gets me to 95. Awesome. And let's not forget this. We did earn eight or more in a round, one spirit point. We did sell one worth at least eight, two more spirit points. And we certainly have five labels from my region. We have every label from my region. And some quick final scoring. It doesn't take long. We've got 32 money. So that is worth six spirit points. So that gets us to 104. Awesome. And the Rickhouse is worth nothing. The Glassworks is worth one. And the Master Blender is worth two for every pair of the same. So two, four, six. I love you. So that's seven more. Gets us to 111. And we're not quite done. We have to look at our bottles. If we had at least one from each of the three regions, which we don't, we would get five bonus victory points. But we do get victory points also for having more than one of the same region. For two from Asia, we just get two. So not much from our bottles. But still 113, amazing score. Because look, all we needed was 13 plus 75, 88. We blew this out of the water. Although I will note they have an easy way to increase difficulty. You put Bs instead of Cs in the second or the fourth or both rows. And that way you have to earn a whole bunch more victory points. So 24 more. I think I still might have won, but it would have been really close. So there you go. That was Distilled Angus. You did your family proud. And hang on if you want to hear my thoughts on the solo play of this one. So there's a lot to like here. Let's jump in. First of all, the upgrading you get to do and the way the game builds is really fun. You saw how huge my sales were by the end and the game tends to have that build, which I really enjoy. And also, I really like this core distilling mechanic where you put a bunch of stuff together, get some free alcohol, shuffle it, and then lose some things. So you're never 100% sure of what you need. and You might want to like add extra ingredients to kind of protect yourself. Now, on the other hand, I can totally see this annoying some people who are randomness averse. Like if they really prepared to get their whiskey and they just barely missed it, they might be frustrated. Although if you add even one extra ingredient, that's usually enough. And there are several upgrades that let you get your cards back or discard fewer. So there are lots of ways to mitigate it if you want. Something else I like are these varied identities. Do they change the game up in some amazingly drastic way? No, but they give you a push to try certain things with their region, with their signature recipe, with their signature ingredient, with their special power. It's a nice amount of variety. Where the variety really lives, and man, I enjoy this, is in this little solo tableau that you lay out. Because especially these A cards are going to totally change your goal for the entire game, what you're trying to strive for. And it's also a nice, easy way to modify difficulty, as I said at the end. It reminds me a bit of Sprawlopolis in that, like, the layout of the victory cards determines your actual victory point goal. And here you even choose it. You know, if I'd gone here, I would need two less. If I'd gone here, I would need ten less. You can try to go for tougher things, and you kind of get rewarded for doing so now if I'm looking for a complaint for the game and I won't even really call it a complaint it's more of a caution the basics of what you are doing is pretty straightforward you're going to buy stuff you're probably gonna get some upgrades you're going to distill several times you might get a lot of vodka every game so I don't think it's going to be like vastly different even with those solo goals even with the identities it's not like you're playing like an entirely new faction each game or exploring and discovering all this crazy stuff but I think it's different enough that euro fans and economic fans and kind of like little tableau building fans We'll uh, have a lot of fun with this, especially if you're into the theme at all. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Please go check out the Kickstarter page if you want to see more about the game. Uh, good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.